Hello and welcome to Fly to Freedom. This is a podcast where we can journey together through the struggles and complexities of eating disorders and focus on healing, understanding and most importantly, compassion. I'm Julia, your host, and today I would like to explore some of the deep emotional aspects of eating disorders, particularly the feelings of isolation that some people, many people do experience, and also how self-compassion can serve as a really powerful tool in our healing process. And I'm going to finish today's episode with a really compassionate meditation that will hopefully help you connect with yourself and perhaps ease some of those isolating feelings. So whether you're listening from home, on a walk, taking a break, let's connect and let's reflect on this important topic together. So a hugely challenging aspect of an eating disorder is that profound sense of isolation it can bring. And this isn't just about feeling alone and being alone. It's also when you feel completely misunderstood by your friends or family or work colleagues or even children. Or you fear judgment so much that you can withdraw from social interactions, especially those involving food, because it just feels too hard, too big, too overwhelming and insurmountable. So today I want to look at why this happens and how we can help to manage these feelings by using self-compassion. So isolation can manifest in so many ways. As I said, some people might avoid social gatherings to avoid scenarios that involve food, which is like a real part of social settings, isn't it? Um, I used to make so many excuses. I like, oh, I'll pop in for a drink afterwards. Or I used to perhaps order something really small and play with it. But then when I went out for lunch, when I went out for meals with friends and stuff, generally they were so entrenched in diet culture that everyone would be ordering a salad or something. So it kind of validated what I would choose, which would be the lowest calorie option on the menu. And even then I would just play with it. And it made me feel, I suppose, like what I was doing was right, even though I kind of knew what I was doing was wrong and it was disordered. But it felt like that was the way to be, like everybody was choosing this sort of food and following diet culture and stuff, which validated my actions and made it like other people thought I was doing the right thing, which actually isolated me further. So while they were praising me and saying things like, oh, you're so good, you're so disciplined, inside, I was I just felt so alone. I felt so misunderstood. I felt like I just couldn't be understood. And what they were saying was right, was just breaking my heart and tearing me apart. So sometimes some people feel like their eating disorder can be a burden to their friends and their family and their loved ones. And I can resonate with this too so much because I kept it so hidden. I told so many lies. I put on a mask at the end of the day, like um, a, not a real mask, obviously, just like pretended that I was putting on a mask, that everything was okay. And I was all put together. And though I would make my family's dinner, I would always say, oh, I've I've eaten or I had a massive lunch, so I only would just want a little bit for dinner or just lies and excuses because I didn't want 
to be a burden to them. I didn't want to be anything less than okay. And I wanted them to think that I was coping really well and that that I had everything together, that I was strong. Because at the time, I viewed vulnerability as a weakness, which I now know that it's not. That actually allowing yourself to be vulnerable is so strong and so brave. And when somebody allows themselves to be vulnerable with you, it's one of the greatest gifts they can give you because it allows you to show your love and compassion and it invites you to be able to help or at least empathize. So a lot of people choose isolation as a way to protect both themselves and others from the challenges and the struggles of their eating disorder. Oh, and the dogs want to join in. Hopefully they'll stop in just a minute. We're just going to carry on. So why is this feeling of isolation so intense? And it's not just about hiding it from other people or avoiding social gatherings. A big part of it can be linked to malnutrition which is a common issue in people with restrictive eating disorders. Malnutrition actually affects the brain in several ways, impacting everything from how we think to how we process emotions. Cognitive impairments make everyday social interactions seem daunting and changes in brain chemistry actually intensify feelings of depression and anxiety. When our bodies are deprived of the essential nutrients, our brain function suffers, which leads to difficulty in concentrating, memory lapses, and impaired decision-making. Moreover, the brain's ability to regulate emotions gets disrupted, which makes it harder to cope with stress and interact socially. And this only adds to the feelings of isolation. I used to find that when I was out with other people, even though they were there and I was with them, I still felt like I was on my own. It felt like, I guess, like I was behind frosted glass, like bathroom glass. And I didn't really talk much because I found it really hard to be present. My brain was like whirring away in a panic all the time trying to work out what lies I'd told about food and what I needed to remember, how I could keep everything together, what I needed to come across as being. So it was really hard to be present. It was really, really hard to follow conversations. Uh, somebody would be talking to me and I would be like, I don't actually know what you're, you've said because my brain just didn't take it in. It was so hard to fully focus and concentrate on anything. And another reason I didn't talk much was because my self-worth was so low that I didn't believe I had anything that anyone would want to listen to. I didn't think I had anything of value to say. And also, I just felt like and this is, again, from a self-worth issue, and I don't feel like this anymore. But I used to be quite paranoid, I guess. And I used to think, oh, they're only being with me to be polite, or they're only talking to me because it would be rude not to. And so my self-worth was so low that the things I told myself isolated me further. But there is hope and understanding the effects that malnutrition can have on your brain can empower you to seek the right kind of help, which is absolutely nutritional rehabilitation and learning or relearning how to eat, how to have a good relationship with food. But hugely importantly is the psychological support is the emotional support, is the learning self-compassion and learning self-love. And these together, because one without the other 
isn't going to get you anywhere. But together, they can gradually restore your brain function and your emotional health. <clears throat> so how can we combat these feelings of isolation and the effects of malnutrition? <laughs> and a hugely powerful method is self-compassion which involves treating yourself with the same kindness, concern, and support you would offer a good friend. So the practical strategies for self-compassion are really, really important. Mindfulness meditation can be incredibly helpful because it teaches us to be present with our feelings without judgment. It is when you, you step out of the feelings, you step out of the whirring brain, you take some deep breaths, you connect with your breath, and you remind yourself that whilst you cannot control these thoughts in your head that are racing around, you are not those thoughts. You're really not. You are the thinker of your thoughts, but you're not your thoughts. And you can be noticing the thoughts, but not giving them your attention. They can just float on past. So meditation can teach us to be present with our feelings, but without judging them. Another useful tool is journaling or writing compassionate letters to yourself. Imagine if you've got a friend who is struggling, who is in the situation you're in, what would you tell them? How would you be there for them? What advice would you give them? Write all those things down and then read them back to yourself. And another thing that's so important, our brains are biased to the negative. And this goes back to our primitive brain that needed to know, like, for instance, which berries were safe to eat. And so we would remember the poisonous berries, which would stop us from having them again. So in our primitive brain, it's really important to remember the negative things so that it keeps us safe. It's a survival response. But often, that negative bias takes over and we only see the negative. So one thing that's really, really helpful is to start training your brain to what you're grateful for. And every morning, and I've done this since the beginning of recovery because I was a super negative person. And every morning I write down the things I'm grateful for. And it can be, I'm grateful I slept well last night or I'm grateful I'm alive. I'm grateful that it's a sunny day. I'm grateful to have woken up with the dog licking my eyelids because she thinks it's morning already. And even though it's quite gross having my eyelids licked, it's really cute as well that she can't wait to start her day and her joy for living. And it's a beautiful thing to see. And I'm so grateful for that. And when we write down, not just think about, but actually write down the things we're grateful for, we shift our focus from what's lacking, from the negative, to what's abundant, to the positive, to what's in our life that is actually truly wonderful. And this creates a much more positive mindset and trains our brains to see more of the positive, which actually does really help with the feelings of isolation and it helps like you move past them another thing that created a lot of isolation for me was the inadvertent validation of my compulsive exercise and this is another area where feelings of isolation can be intensified because my behaviours were so validated. People commented on what they perceived as an incredible discipline and commitment to my health and to my fitness. 
which reinforced the compulsive behaviour, which made me feel even more misunderstood and alone. So it's really important to educate the people around us about all these different nuances to ensure that the well-meaning compliments don't actually inadvertently validate our harmful behaviours. Instead, we can ask them to encourage and focus on things we do for our emotional health and well-being and not physical appearance or activities. So as we wrap up today's episode and before I go into the meditation, I hope these discussions, this discussion has resonated with you and shown you that you're not alone even when you feel totally alone. Reach out at any time. I'm always in the DMs, emails. um, You can contact me through my website as well. You're not on your own. And I would love you to reach out when you're feeling scared, when you're feeling alone. I'm here for you. And there's so many other people that are here for you as well. Because although it can feel really isolating, recovery is not a linear journey and it's okay to have setbacks. But let's focus on compassion and understanding. There are so many people who are following this same journey as you. They're having the same struggles as you. So let's stay connected, stay safe, and remember that you are more than your struggles. And now I'm just going to go put some music on and go into a meditation. Let's just get the music on. So if you'd like to take a seat... Welcome to this meditation session. If you are experiencing feelings of isolation as part of your journey with an eating disorder, this meditation is designed to offer you a moment of peace and connection. Find a quiet, comfortable space where you won't be disturbed. You might choose to sit on a cushion, a chair, or even lie down. But I ask you to allow yourself this time to nurture your mind and your body with kindness and compassion. Let's begin by taking three deep, intentional breaths. Breathe in deeply, filling your lungs completely. And then exhale slowly, letting all the tension melt away. Again. Breathe in and breathe out. Once more, in and out. Each breath is bringing you deeper into a state of relaxation. With your next inhale, feel the air nurturing your body. And as you exhale, imagine releasing out any feelings of loneliness or sadness. Now, gently close your eyes if you haven't already. And let's bring some awareness to our body. 
starting at the very top of your head. Bring your focus to the very top and notice any sensations here without judgment. Gradually move your attention down to your forehead, releasing the little lines, the little tight bit between your eyes, your cheeks. Unclench your jaw and take your tongue from the roof of your mouth and let it just sit in the base of your mouth. Soften any tension with each out breath. Continue this awareness down through your neck to your shoulders. Just let them drop down. Your arms, your hands. Unfurl your fingers. Feel your body supported on the cushion, on the chair, on the bed. Supported and safe. Now bring your focus to your chest, to your heart. Can you feel your heart beating? This beat is your life force, your rhythm of existence that connects you to the living world. As you scan down to your stomach, your hips, through your legs and into your feet, uncurling your toes, Remember, any discomfort or tightness, be compassionate. Visualize your breath as a gentle touch to those areas that feel tight, that have any sensations of pain. It's okay to acknowledge any pain or distress, just notice it. You don't need to change it right now. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. With your body now relaxed, let's turn our attention inward to our thoughts and feelings. If you are struggling with feelings of isolation, being scared and alone, just generally lonely, Imagine those feelings as a shape or a color. What color are they? What shape are they? Do they stay still or do they swirl around? Do they feel heavy or light? hot or cold, just notice. Observe this with kindness. At this point, it's nice to place a hand over your heart as a reminder that you are not alone. 
your experiences are being shared by many other people all around the world. You are living part of the human experience. Now with your hand on your heart, visualize a gentle, warm light coming from your heart and spreading to every single part of your body. Feel the warmth from this light filling you with each breath. It gets stronger and it moves around. This light represents compassion. Warm, loving, unconditional and forgiving. As your whole body is bathed in this light, let it be a soothing balm to your feelings of isolation. Bring your attention back to your breath. As you breathe in, notice the air going past your nostrils and filling your body. And as you breathe out, just notice the sensations. I'm going to say some affirmations now. And I'd like you to repeat them silently in your head, letting them resonate with your heart. I am not alone in my struggles. Others share this path with me. I deserve compassion and kindness just as anyone else does. My feelings are valid and I accept them with gentleness. I am connected to a world of love and support. I'm going to repeat these affirmations and I want you to let each one soak deeply into your being. Each word is a seed of compassion that is going to be growing within you. I am not alone in my struggles. Others share this path with me. I deserve compassion and kindness just as anyone else does. My feelings are valid and I accept them with gentleness. I am connected to a world of love and support. Imagine now that this warm light extends beyond you. 
connecting you to others who might also feel isolated or misunderstood. Visualize your light intertwining with others and feel the bonds of shared humanity. Knowing that you are a part of a much larger community, all deserving love and understanding. As this meditation comes to a close, slowly bring your awareness back into the room. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Stretch your muscles. When you're feeling ready, open your eyes. Your heart is filled with a sense of peace and connectedness. Take it with you. Remind yourself of, you, of your inner strength and the compassion that surrounds you. Thank you so much for joining me in this meditation. May you feel less isolated and more embraced by the world around you as you continue your journey. Thank you for being you. I love you.